Thank you so much for being here with us today. I have just come from a recital tour in North America, 
And the program you're hearing tonight is exactly the same is, uh, from the recital tour program in Canada and the US. The one difference being that Joe and I have the honor of premiering a song that was written specifically for this occasion by Tansy Davis and, uh, Tansy Davies and poet Nick Drake. So a little, a few words about the program. Can you hear me all right with this microphone? All good? Yeah, great. So a few words, a few words about the program. The first half is loosely tied around the theme of the seasons, seasons of weather, but also seasons of life and relationships. As you heard in that Schubert set, we had very obvious seasons like spring and autumn, and all in between that, there were seasons of relationships past and the way that emotions evolve, and then the psychological turmoil of that last song, which is, um, a pretty blustery season for a relationship or I don't know just like a British type of season with the weather here you know <laughs> really mercurial um, <laughs> and uh, this this first half will end with songs of the seasons by Margaret Bonds with poetry by Langston Hughes and since there is an issue with the copyright of that set I would like to say oh no actually you know what I'll speak I'll speak after Tansy's piece no, no, actually, I'll say it all right now. It's better to keep it compact. Um, so a bit about the Margaret Bonds, and then I'll say a few things about Tansy's piece. You won't see the text for the Margaret Bonds, but the way that she's set Langston Hughes' poetry is super clear. It's a very uh, playful, sensual, visceral take on the seasons. It's not bereft with so much turmoil like when Schubert tries to describe spring. So it's, it's, it's refreshing to have seasons that are more, you know, evocative of, of the weather and the sensations rather than, you know, often singing about failed loves. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice change of pace after the Schubert seasons. And um, Margaret Bonds wrote the, she wrote Autumn and Winter in 1936 and Spring and Summer in 1955. She was best friends with Langston Hughes, wrote a lot of music set to his words, as also in music theater. And she was so distraught after his death. Uh, they were both living in New York City at the time. She was distraught so much that she had to leave New York. And she went to LA after that and was never really the same. So when you hear Songs of the Seasons, not only is it a beautiful and sensual evocation for the English language of what we have possible in the seasons, it is also a tribute to an enormous friendship. And Margaret Bonds herself was a virtuosic pianist, so you can hear so much fantastic fantasy in that writing for the instrument as well. And now, going from those seasons to Our Song by Tansy Davies. It's so exciting to be able to sing about an ice core sample. Bit of a once in a lifetime type of experience. And, and also it elegantly slides into our first half about the seasons because uh, the seasons are becoming very different things now with global warming. And this ice core sample is the voice of the ice talking to humans and the voice of humans somewhere in there having a dialogue with the ice. And what can ice core samples tell us? And how, do, how does the state of these uh, glaciers and all this ice, how does that affect our season? So it's, um, we didn't know what the piece was gonna be about. Um, and, and this is just a great happenstance where we get to um, put something in this set that is also somehow influenced, influencing the seasons of the weather. So I thought that before we embark on this piece, I will recite the poem in its entirety. And then, show, then, then we'll just slip right into the song. And, uh, and I will, wait, with this microphone, I need to figure out what to do with it. Uh, we won't slip right into the song. Let's <laughs> applaud after the poem, because it's a beautiful poem by Nick Drake. Here we go. The ice core sample says, 
Hush, please. This is the Library of Ice, a high security auditorium of silence far below zero, an archive of cold that keeps me as I am and reminds me of home now that it is gone forever. Listen carefully. I am a long story, 10,000 feet long, a hundred thousand years old, a chronicle of lost time, a long journey back to the first dark, too dark for telling. I am every winter's fall. I am the keeper of the air of all the vanished summers. I honor the shadows of sorrows that have come to lie between my pages. I distill lost atmospheres pressed into ghosts kept close to my cold heart. And as for you, what story would you like to hear? On your two feet, tracking the snow, two by two, two by two, two by two. Here is the dust and music of your brief cities. Here is the ash and smoke. Here are the, your traffic jams and vapor trails. Here are your holidays in the sun and your masterpieces and your pop songs. Here are your first cries and last whispers. Here are your long sighs of disappointment. Here is where it went right and where it went wrong. Easy come, easy go. So I know why you slice moon after moon from me, holding each fragile face up to your searchlights. Why you measure and record the tiny cracks and snaps of my mysteries, because, you know, you are the people who have changed nature. And now, you are on your own. I have no more to tell. No questions, please, about the future. For now, the great narrator, silence, takes over. Listen carefully to her story, for you are in it. Thank you, Nick Drake.
of your brief cities. Here is the earth and smoke. Here are your traffic jams and Changed. 
Thank you. 
you very much. Now, I would like to say a few words about the next two sets you're about to hear. So, the two songs by Metner are two sides of the same coin. On one hand, we have Twilight, which is about connection with nature, awe, and gratitude. The sentence in that song, which really sums it up really well, is which in Russian means everything is in me and I am in everything. Quite a Buddhist sentiment for that time. And then with sleeplessness, it's also quite existential, but it's a bit more nihilistic because the sound of a clock ticking at night is something that keeps us awake as we think about our mortality. And who hasn't been there, you know? You just go in a bunch of spirals, can't sleep all night, thinking about all the difficult things in the world and how we will um, all be gone soon. And that is, um, that, it, that is also part of everything and me and me and everything. It's just a different side of it. So you'll hear in the piano when it starts, you'll hear the motive of the clock. And Metner himself wrote quarter note equals 60, which is the exact uh, measure of a second hand on a watch. So you'll hear that motive and it talks about how we're all called by this kind of compulsion in ourselves to think about life in this way. It's, it's only human to get swept up in, in these worries and these thoughts, all of that ego-based living. And then at the end, though, the song says that, yes, th yes, this, cl this clock is crying for us, but there's hope in the middle of it. And that hope comes in the form of new generations or the concept of renewal. So just as nature renews itself, humans renew themselves. And we can, um, we can be hopeful for the humans who are yet to come. And also what we can learn from the really young ones who are around today, um, the generations below us. And it's, it's quite a, it's a very cyclical thought. So although it's a song where it's, it's quite tortured, <laughs> it's also incredibly positive because our lives have so much meaning exactly because they are limited. And so going from that song about sleeplessness, we'll go straight into a song which is an advertisement uh, an advertisement for sheets and pillowcases. <clears throat> and we'll go straight we'll go straight into it. And it's a bit of a joke for these times where you know our phones listen to everything we say. So um, you talk about how you can't sleep and you get all of these advertisements on your phone, for example, or it could be anything, you know, like your cat and then you get cat food and so it's really um, uh, it is really un unreal, but uh, it's uh, for these songs which were written in the 20s, there, it's not so different. Now we're walking around in society and things are constantly being sold to us. That's our waking life is uh, products, product, products, ads. And it's, it's fascinating that someone like Nicholas Solimsky, who immigrated to New York State in the 20s from Tsarist Russia, he immigrated to teach at the Eastman School of Music. And he, uh, he would look at all these products in the newspapers in America and one day, I guess he thought, oh, I would love th these to be the lyrics to some songs I'll write. So these are the songs. Uh, there are products that maybe you're not familiar with in the UK. Um, I myself have not heard of Utica <laughs> sheets and pillowcases, um, but something in Canada we know about is Pillsbury, you know, the, the Pillsbury Doughboy, Pillsbury Cookies. And, um, or biscuits as you call them here, and P Pillsbury brand muffins, um, that's, a, that's a very popular brand. The nose powder, I haven't heard of, that's from the 20s. And um, Pepsodent, Pepsodent is a toothpaste we know in North America. And, um, and so in, in, in place of the American brands, please imagine your own UK equivalent. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I just thought it was interesting to model this recital. It was touring throughout Canada and the US, and those, those audiences found it really delightful because we grow up with advertisements for some of those, and 
It's great to have some North American North American songs that are quite different. And Margaret Bonds and Nicholas Slonimsky are quite different in their writing than the North American songs we might hear in the UK, like Samuel Barber or William Bolcom. Those are slightly different genres, so it's it's really a, and fun to explore these aesthetics. So we will we will see you on. Uh, oh, another, another. Um, I wanted to say a couple cool notes about Slonimsky. He was friends with Frank Zappa, and uh, he also um, his biography is called um, "The First 100 Years" because he lived to be 101. His autobiography, and and also he wrote the uh, the lexicon of musical invective, which is a book that's a collection of all the bad reviews composers have ever gotten, <laughs> and. <laughs> And, and he also wrote um, the thesaurus of musical modes and scales, which a lot of jazz people swear by. He's quite a character. I think you'll hear a lot of that in his music. He's even made parodies of sorts in each song. And um, it's been really, really fun to discover the voice of a composer through his character and also to feel through this juxtaposition of the Metner immediately followed by the Slanimsky. We, we mixed up the order. I, I, I changed the order so that the sheets and pillowcases would come right after the Metner, because I think it's, um, it's, it's, really, uh, it, it's, it's really interesting to see what happens when you go from the sacred and these deep thoughts to, to something seemingly shallow, um, yet we can see these advertisements, really, are they a bunch of silly songs or are they the doom of capitalism? I mean, you can, you can choose your own adventure and how you, how you receive them. <laughs> anyway, it's enough talking from me. <laughs> I, now, now we will see you. We'll see you on the other side of the toothpaste. We begin now with immense gratitude and awe for nature at the time of dusk. Here is Metner's Twilight.
things. There is health and delight in every night. And this the doctor told her. or soothing drugs. Ask your druggist for genuine castoria, which has directions for babies and children of all ages printed directly on the bottle. Children cry for castoria! Yes, they cry for castoria. Here is your chance. 
for your amazing energy tonight. And uh, yeah, every audience um, has us uh, responding differently. So the audience is part of, huge part of the experience. You're creating it with us. So thank you for doing it very well tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Great energy in here. Now we have an encore to send you off into the night. And thank you again. Uh, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Leeds Leader, for creating such a brilliant festival with some of the most impressive programming and some of the most inspiring colleagues. It's such a joy to be part of this. So thank you so much for all the work you do. And uh, to thank you all, uh, this encore is, this is a arrangement of a Macedonian song that I have commissioned for this tour. The song is called Zaidi, Zaidi Jasno Sonse, and uh, it was written by Aleksandar Sarievski, one of our most well-known musicians from Macedonia. He wrote it in the 50s. And now we have the fabulous Daria Andovska, who has arranged it. Daria it lives in Skopje, and uh, she's been brilliant at creating this setting of this song. As far as I know, it, there's never been a classical arrangement. This is a very iconic song for all people from the Balkans. It's, um, I wouldn't say it's an anthem of sorts, but it's, it's the type of song that means a lot and has a special place in uh, people's hearts, uh, especially people who grew up in former Yugoslavia, like my parents. So yeah, I was, I, was born, I was born in Skopje, Macedonia, and when I was one year old, we immigrated to Canada, and I grew up with the culture. So on this tour, I wanted to bring something from that part of myself. And uh, some of the most be beautiful, beautiful music in the world comes from there. And it's such a pleasure to be able to share this with you today. In fact, I believe it's the first time this, has, this arrangement has been heard on this side of the Atlantic. So uh, you are the first to hear it <laughs> here, not in North America, but here. Yeah. And uh, just a few notes about the words. The words are Zaidi. Zaidi is in reference to the sun. It means to set. So we're saying to the sun, set. Set Zaidi, clear or bright sun, jasno, sonse, sonse, sun. And then um, there's also the set. We're saying to the moon, please set and drown yourself. And then we have, speak, we're speaking to the forest, saying to this forest, let's mourn together, dear forest. And we're saying, you will mourn for your trees, I will mourn for my youth. And the last uh, verse is saying to the forest, oh dear forest, your trees will return, but my youth will not return. And it is a song that is both, I mean, a lot like Schubert, it's bittersweet. You know, it's, it's melancholic um, that we can't, always remain in our youth, but at the same time, that's, it's, it's beautiful that, that everything is so cyclical and that we can see so much regeneration in nature and that, yeah, youth is just maybe just a state of mind, just like the trees. That's a, I mean, I need a, this is going to start into a philosophical spiral. <laughs> I, I, no, enough with that. It's, <laughs> it's, if you get me going, I'll, I'll be here all night talking about... <laughs> talking about the finitude of life. Um, <laughs> yes, so here we go. This is 
This is Zaidi Zaidi Yasno Sonse, and Daria has written in the in the piano. There's some inside the piano playing, and that is more. It's an emotional expression, sort of like the wind, the wind in the trees, or it's a sigh. It's it's a song that has an improvisatory character that has a, a bit of a um, how do I say like um, melismas ornaments. You can hear a lot of the Ottoman Empire influence in Macedonian music. Um, the 500 years that the Turks were there. So it's you can hear all of those influences and the part of that is just that we have this exchange between the voices. So thank you, thank you for being here tonight and enjoy this slice of Macedonia. Thank you. 
Yeah.